Am I ready to go? Thanks. Bring me, bring me to me in. <laughs> yes. Elbows straight. Okay. Now play the game. Stroke is something that occurs at all ages, from newborn babies right through to old age. Uh, and my research interest has been how the brain reorganises and learns to control arms again after a stroke at whatever age. I couldn't walk at all when I had the stroke. So I had to learn to walk, had to learn to use the left arm again. Prior to the stroke, movement tends to be automatic. And after the stroke, it's not. Working with patients, uh, we began to appreciate that people wanted to learn to move again in ways that were fun and really enjoyable. And using action video games arose with the young people, and when we discussed it with older people who'd had stroke, the idea was also very attractive to them. And so we've now brought together a team of uh, game engineers and mathematicians so that we can use gaming to encourage people to practice using their arms and hands and then we can actually measure how well they're doing it. Using that information then we can feed back to therapists or clinicians the progress that someone is making in their rehabilitation. It's like a full circle. We've had to understand how games are designed and made, how to get an accurate data set out of games. Mathematicians have to learn how to deal with real people, who are all very different but then get valid and reliable data sets and then translate that data set to answer the questions that clinicians and patients need to answer. Am I making progress? If I did more time on this game, would I do better? Press trigger. Just copy my movements as best you can. Looks as if I should have me leotard on though, doesn't it? It also <laughs> is a very good route to assess how well people can perform because within a game you can ask someone to perform a movement under standardised conditions each time. It may appear uh, apparently randomly within the game, but you can lead them up and require them to do a movement under high motivation with standardised conditions. And that's an ideal situation then to start measuring how well they're able to perform that movement. Mm, that's hard. Our mathematicians are taking this data and creating a model that will tell us how well someone is actually able to perform in everyday life, how close someone is to independence, how much they've changed, and also predicting where they're likely to plateau in six months to a year's time if they do uh, the program fully. No, I can't do that once. I can't do it with my left hand. So I've got to try that again to get two stars. That's it. Oh, that's it, yes. Yeah, and then the right hand's going to help the left hand, isn't it? Yeah. What we found is that people have no difficulty. Age hasn't been a barrier, lack of experience hasn't been a barrier. And in fact, people have said for the first time they've really enjoyed therapy, that they can go home, do it when they like, really enjoy it. The next phase is to actually take it to a group of patients who will volunteer to use the system in conjunction with their therapists and their clinical teams. We want a product which is based on good science, which has a practical application and is available at a cost which is affordable to the NHS. So there, there are targets. So at the end of three years, that's what we want to produce. It's great fun. It's great fun, yes. Bigger circle. <laughs> Bigger circle, yes. But it's, make, it's bringing out the competitive nature of me, isn't it? Because I want two stars. <laughs>